Hey everyone and welcome to another video guys and today I actually did my classic Tuesday morning diamond coaching sessions within my Midland Academy and I thought it was really interesting how both of these reviews that I did kind of highlighted and touched on the exact same concepts. One, one player managed to fail to execute upon this concept and the other player managed to execute upon it pretty flawlessly. So in the first vault here, we have Silas versus Cassidy, which was a loss in Diamond 4. And the second one we have here was a Cassiopeia versus Zed, which was a win in Diamond 1. And the concept today that we're gonna, or both of these vaults really touch on very well, is identifying your role in the game and understanding how to play around your win conditions. In this first game, this Silas had a very fed bot lane and failed to identify what he needed to do to complement his bot lane. In the second game here, very similar start in the early game, gets behind a little bit, um, but actually identifies how to correctly play around the Fed members of his team and ends up taking out a win. Now, one thing you will find when you watch this second review especially is that a lot of people would not win this game. You know, Zed gets an early kill, people would tilt, they would give up, and they would pretty much mentally check out of the game, and they would fail to identify their role in the game, and they wouldn't lose gracefully. They would lose this game. So losing gracefully is a skill within itself that is highlighted very well within this second review. Now, if you're not really interested in the matchup specifically, that is okay. You can skim through the first part of the vaults and get more to the to the meat of it, because most of like the, the, the learning is towards the mid to late game in both of these vaults. But if you have a bit of time, I think that no matter what champion you do play, whether you play Silas or whether you play Cassiopeia, you will get a lot of value from watching these reviews. So let me know if you want to see more of these things. I think these VODs work very well together. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts, guys. Cheers. So um, what are we looking at today, man? What, is there something specific you wanted to hone in on or is it just like more of like a general re review? Uh, I guess more like a general re review. Um, I'm... I feel like I get stuck in this like position where I'm too scared to move up in lane. I lose out on CS and I just feel kind of like useless almost the entire game. So I'm, I'm not really sure what I can do better. I, I guess I kind of fall into that pitfall. It's like, I'm playing against Kassin in this game and I'm just like, oh, Kassin is so broken. Like, I, I don't know what to do against them. So um, out of interest, did you blind pick Silas early in the draft or? Uh, yeah, no, I, I first picked Silas. Right, and what did you ban? I banned Katarina because Katarina is, uh, in my opinion, also not fun to play against, at least. Right. Um. Yeah. Well, Kazanin is or is de <laughs> is definitely worse <laughs> to deal with than than Katarina. But um, look, we'll have a go. This is a bit of a rough matchup. Um. I mean, in terms of ultimacy, I mean, Nocturnal is pretty good. Um. Kazanin is like the worst in the game. Um. I don't really know much about Senna on, on, on Silas, but I can't imagine it to be that good. I think Seraphina would be really good, though. So, yeah, at least you got two solid ults. Um, right. He does have Electrocute, Secondary Resolve. Um, yeah, this is a very hard lane, purely also because you don't even have an early gank or into jungler. Because generally, you would want to probably get a gank in the early game. So, I'm assuming if I were in this game, my strategy would be to try and hold the wave on my side or at least uh yeah get the wave on my side and then um try and blow a flash early with an extended trade down the long lane with uh kane in the area with my uh with my e so um we'll see if we can get that done this game and yeah, uh well i can tell you right now my wave early is not good i do end up blowing his flash um but we didn't really do anything off of it. That was an awful trade, but... Yeah, so you, it, it, it seems to me that you're probably not going to be able to win trades until level two. I think level one, you're probably going to get railed purely because of bone plating, and you have no way to pop right. the bone plating. Now, for some reason, Cassidy at level one... By the way, what, what di where are we in diamond in this VOD? Uh, diamond four, like 50 LP. So what were you thinking in terms of your strategy? What was your strategy? Um... Well, I assumed he won W. Um, yeah. Although I wasn't sure, I, I didn't know he had bone plating. Honestly, then now that you mention it, he does. Okay. He does have bone plating. So I didn't think um, about that going in with the dash. I don't know. I just thought maybe he would have gone Q and he didn't use it on me yet. But I guess he did go W. So I guess my thought process was hoping to poke him down maybe and try to whittle him down before um, I guess he hit six. Wait, so, you, so you weren't thinking about wave state, you weren't thinking about 
And, and again, I'm not trying to judge. I'm just trying to figure out what you do and don't think about. I'm trying to figure out what where you're at. Right. No, I do think about the way you say it, but it's 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 always I find it always difficult having like a melee laner push me in. I end up always pushing the wave for some reason, especially on Silas with my um, passive. Okay. So I find it tough. Like, what do you recommend? Do you just recommend not hitting the minions or not using abilities? Well, 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 cause, or because think I... about it, right? Let, let, let's be very logical about this. You do not win short trades. You are always going to lose short trades because of the way the W works, and especially since the, the W bug, right? Where you can like proc electro really easily with the W. You're never going to win a short trade, Silas. Um, you have Conqueror. And your kit is literally designed for long extended trades. Um, you know, right. you can take short trades with electric, but most of the time you're going to take long extended trades. In order to do that and abuse the immobility of Cassidy in the early lane, we need the wave on this side. All right. So um, yeah. my strategy in this game would be either I'll try to wait to see what Cassidy does with the wave level one, but ideally if he starts hitting the wave level one or, or more than last hits, actually uses his W on a creep. Yep, I'll be like, okay, I'm just gonna last hit. I'm gonna maybe even miss a, a, a minion level one, level two, uh, level one, sorry, uh, in the first wave, uh, maybe one of the one of the melees or two of the melees, but the wave is gonna be here. Then I'm gonna be able, to, I'm gonna try, maybe even start, I might even start Q, thin the wave a little bit. Cause again, I don't wanna E in level one. All right. Um, because I'll just get destroyed and he has bone plating, right? So I might even start Q to level one potentially. And then I'm just going to try and keep, get, keep the wave here and then probably all in at level three and try to take extended trades and heavy trades at level three. That would be my strategy. Cause I think if, if the wave is on Cassidy inside early, it's going to be an absolute nightmare. That's, that's, that's my hypothesis because I feel as though you're not, he, he can kind of stand inside the minions with his W and kind of just like prevent you from crashing the wave. And right now, yes. And, and look, I can probably see why you tend to shove on Silas because your level two is so good. So you can do some really like the, these sorts of trades. But yeah, in my opinion, it's just not worth it. Like the trade you're going to get here at level two is not worth the con the, the the wave might be p being potentially screwed. Conversely, you could do what you've done here if your intention was to bounce it and get it on your side as soon as possible. But in order to do that, ideally you would try and crash the first two. You wouldn't try and crash the first three because you want to speed up the process, right? You want the wave on your side as fast as possible. All right. And the problem with building waves as Silas into Cassidy is that again, now you're going to ding level three and the wave's going to be on Cassidy's side. You can't really utilize it. And on top of that, you're delaying the amount of time um, that the wave is on Cassidy's side and you're delaying the amount of time that you can't take extended trades. And on top of that, Silas can't really utilize slow build waves because you, know, you can't poke on the tower, can you? Yeah. So, and then you don't even crash this wave. So notice how the first four waves have been on Kassadin's side. And now that's exactly what I said is. Notice how I said he's going to stand inside the minions and he's just going to park himself and then he's just going to auto W. Right. Or QW. Because he just procs it with the, with the WQ. And in the process of trying to get the wave out as much as you can, you're, you're, just, you're going oom. And now... And now uh, you basically have given Cassidy the free levels one to four. But finally, it's coming back out into your side. We'll see how this goes. So, what's your thought process at this point? So at this, so uh, there's a fight coming up. So at this point, I actually do um, blow his flash. I'm pretty sure this happens within the next like 20 seconds. So I'm thinking he's like, oh, so my it's gonna push into me. I'm thinking, I mean, it's in a good spot. Although, um, I guess I can talk about like the future lane state as well. Is like once I do blow his flash, I'm too low to kind of get the wave back under his tower, and he just teleports in, and he has the better wave again. So I, I'm I'm not sure. Basically, okay. I'm not, I I'm honestly 
not really sure what I was supposed to do in this um, f uh, about these waves, I guess. Uh, yeah, so ideally here, you should probably, I mean, if you hit that cube, proc the bone plating, it'll probably make things a little bit easier for these trades, but it's okay. We know we're in an isolated 1v1 because North turns bot side. Yeah, he doesn't have, then this is where you can absolutely destroy him, right? He's having to yeah. extend, he's down the long lane. Maybe even could have held, you put, maybe even could have held your uh, Q there after he yeah. flashed so you could actually get the slow. If you, I think if you hold Q there, he actually just dies because you use Q flash order. I'm pretty sure he just dies. All right. And then here I, I see that my, my waves is going to push it into him. So I try to get it out as fast as possible, but then he just TPs onto the next wave. Okay. So what can you do then? What, what do you think the best course of action is? Or are you, are you unsure? I'm, I'm honestly not sure. I, I guess I could recall, but then he could just freeze it if he does TP in, like, which he does. Um. Yeah, I, I think that if you... I think what I probably would have done here afterwards, I would have probably shoved this and then insta-reset myself, except reality that it's frozen and just TP back. And then um, as I TP back... Ward to one side and, and, and lean. I think you should be okay because Nocturne isn't going to be six yet. And I think you're going to be all good. But the wave, yeah. Wait, the wave is actually... I think that wave is actually... Yeah, it's pushing out to you. You're all good. Oh, yeah, you're right. It actually crashed. You're all good. All right, so this guy now has an Oblivion Orb. So in terms of the 1v1, it's going to be a little bit tricky. He's, so basically, look, so far from what I've seen, there's a definite misunderstanding about how you were to play these early waves in this matchup, which is basically given Cassidy in a free levels 1 to 6. And even, because, even though you got his flash, it wasn't until level 5 in which you just ding 6 anyway, so it doesn't really do anything. So right. yeah, you basically gave him a free levels 1 to 6, which look... It's not the end of the world since it is a counter matchup anyway, but I just think that we probably could have created uh, a lot more pressure onto this Cassidy in early. Yeah, at this point, it's basically just downhill from here. It's I, I'm going to start losing um, my CS lead. Um, I try roaming a lot, but that just puts me even more behind. And yeah. Um, well, to be honest with you, your team is actually doing quite well right now, man. So right, yeah. I, I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking as, as long as Cassidy doesn't get fed here, we, we might be able to win even without me doing well. But it's, I don't know. I, I feel like it was mainly on my, um, it was mainly my fault because I basically didn't do anything the entire game. Because I was too scared to 1v1 him. I'm too scared, I guess, to move out on side lanes because of the Nocturne ult. And I was I, maybe I was playing too scared, but I feel like I was just so weak. Okay, we'll take a look at this because at this point in time, Silas is not a champion where you need to like force stuff. It's like, wait. So here, I I was thinking I could have altered the center there with that Seraphine. So my problem here is that you just TP in blind. You don't pan your camera once to that lane. So I guess, I mean, I guess they're pretty overextended, so it's going to work. But just as a ha just as a principle, you generally do want to at least pan your camera just to see what is going on there and what the HP values are. But anyway, not too bad. Pick up a kill. Um, I mean, the only problem with this is that the wave is actually, I mean, Cassid ends up shoving the wave, so you don't really want to attend this fight. I think it would have been probably good for you to just back, back, ping back, go back to mid, because you're going to miss a wave and a half here, dude. Yeah. So, this is not really optimal. You're basically, yeah. You, look, I think the TP is great, and you've got a winning side, and it's going to complement your winning side, but then you just gave, you just kind of missed, you know, nine creeps, and you're just wasting time here. As a principle in League of Legends, man, you probably heard me say this, but you hear me say it a lot within my, in my coaching videos, that you must help yourself before you help others, in a way. So yeah, it doesn't definitely. matter. 
it doesn't matter if you TP bot and then you get your bot ahead, but then you're that far behind, you know, that you can't lane. It doesn't matter. Because you're still a burden. You must be doing things that are good for you. So what I would have done in this situation, I would have been back, back, back. I don't want to extend this play. It has to be fast. Because you've got to get back to mid lane ASAP. I don't want this play. He's gone. Senna's gone. Back, 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 back. The blue's gone. Back it up. So we waste time. We come back mid. Take a look at this. Um, hmm. I mean, obviously this is not like optimal, but it's hard for you to read whether the Nocturne actually is hovering the castle or not. So I don't mind you taking this. It is what it is, but it's just solidifying even more that you're not the wing con. Yeah. Which is great. Look, your bot lane's killing it, man. You've got a very fed bot lane. You've got a very fed cane. This game, this game is a done deal. Top struggling, but that's okay. So, this is the classic scenario in solo queue where you are to identify your, your, your actual win con on your team and you need to lose gracefully. You need to figure out a way to just play to complement your team. Beautiful, your probably have already got their tower. So what, you, what should you do here? Well, they end up coming mid and I go bot yeah? to yeah. I side lane with my teleport. Yeah. But it's it just seems like I'm still losing out on a bunch of CS and Kasten just ends up outscaling me and I and then Noc Nocturne ends up getting a lot of kills too and it's just uh, it, I can't really do much in fights. Dude, this Kasten can't play the game anymore. Oh yeah, this was quite unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, you can't... I've, I, I kind of saw this coming here because Seraphine has ult. But, um... Yeah. I mean, you can't play this fight, man. There's just no way in a million years. We don't, again, we don't thought, need to do anything fancy here, dude. It back up, yeah. take this and ult, you know, go back bot. Yeah. All right. So we die there for no reason. We come back. You could either go top and allow we go bot, or you go bot. Both of them work. But Dragon is up here, so we should be going for Dragon. Wave is in a very good spot, mid, uh, bot. I think it's actually pushing back out to you, bot lane. I believe, is it? Let's see. No, it's actually not. Okay, so we shove it out. Nocturne doesn't have ult, I believe. So we should be stacking Dragons this game. Beautiful. We shove it all the way out. Excuse the buffering time is a little bit slow here. Yeah, no worries. They trade one for one mid. Yeah, unfortunately, it's kind of stuck here for now. So we're going to try and get it out at all costs. Oh, okay. So what we should do in this situation. So it looks like the wave was actually slowly pushing out here. I think here was actually pushing back out to you. So we shouldn't touch this wave at all. Mm -hmm. We should not touch this wave at all. Because think about it. What we, I mean, we can't actually guarantee the wave to get out because we don't win the 1v1. We don't really want to rotate. We don't really want to push and rotate because we just want our team to start the dragon anyway. Unless they're starting the dragon. I don't think there's anything we can do unless in a situation where you do shove it out like this and cast it and rocks up, it's okay. Cause you're not your jungle can't help you. So you just go mid. Either call for the dragon or you go mid and you threaten mid lane and try and break mid tower. Cause you can't win the 1v1 here. Yeah. Again, your goal, you're not it doesn't matter, you're gonna be behind, it's inevitable. You've already messed up. It's okay. You still got other strong members. Your job is to make their life as easy as possible. We can just do that. Do that by complimenting them, calling for objectives, call for the rift, call for the dragon. There's no way we shouldn't be stacking dragons this game or stacking objectives. And then we just go in. 
when our jungle is like on raptors and we just die unnecessarily. Fast forward a little bit. This is a very interesting VOD, man. It's telling me a lot, a lot. There's a lot here to, to unpack. All right, so you come back bot here. We see that our Kane is topside. We're not getting Dragon for some reason. So a bit of an interesting scenario. In this situation, when you're kind of on the opposite side and your team's doing objectives on the other side, which kind of kind of shove, we can even maybe do Krugs if we really want to. There's not really much we can do here. We don't win the 1v1, but that's okay. Because we have other members that can deal with the Cassidy. Yep. But ideally in this situation, you don't want to like, you don't want to shove this out as fast as possible, do you? Like you can just milk it. You just do it really, really slow. Because the wave's actually pushing to you again. Just don't, just, just last hit. Okay. You don't need to shove this, do you? I mean, you have TP, worst case scenario, but it's not like your team is immediately sieging. If you shove this, all that's going to happen is that Cassin is just going to freeze or Cassin is just going to have the, the wave deep in the lane. You know, we're just shoving, shoving, shoving for no reason here. If we just kept the wave here, you'd be great. You'd be in an amazing position. Then we shove one wave. We hover. We complement our team here. I think I go too hard here. Yep, we just go take it slow. No need to dive here. Right. Yeah, the only problem with this is, yeah, Cassin is coming from the bot lane here, coming up, up the river. Yeah. We just got to back, 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 back. And remember, your job in these fights is to actually peel your fed member. It's not to dive. And that's, that's basically the game right there. Okay. Fascinating game, man. Tells me a lot. So, um... Out of interest, um, just as a little bit of background information, what was your real name, man? Uh, my name's Kevin. Kevin. Just as a bit of background information, have you been... Um, what, what's your league history? Have you been um, Diamond for multiple seasons? You've been a certain main for a champion for a while? What's, what's the go? What's your situation? Um, yeah, no, so I've been playing since around, like, end of Season 2, mm -hmm. um, although I grew up in Germany, so I played on EU West. Yeah. But I mainly played normal games, um, because, I don't know, my friends played normals. And then I moved to the US, and I finally was able to get play ranked, and I got to Platinum, and then I got into college, I got Diamond. I usually get Diamond, although I stopped playing, like, halfway through the season, and I end up decaying right. back to Platinum. Um, so, but I did peak in Diamond 2 around uh, Season 9 or Season 10, and okay. I guess I would say I'm an Ari main, but ever since I started playing, I kind of just play everything, you know, I, yeah. sometimes I play some Silas, sometimes I play some Ari, some, sometimes I play Malzahar, Nivea, like, it's just, I don't really have a main, but I have the most games on Ari, for sure. Yeah, so that makes perfect sense, because when I watch you play, um, Kevin... Um, you are, I, I, I could just sense that you're one of those old school players because you do things, but you don't know why you do things and it's getting to, the game has evolved, Kevin. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I resonate, dude, I resonate big time. I was in your shoes where I felt this is exactly how I used to play. Very intuitive, you know, rely on micro or whatever. Um, you kind of just do things and like your it, you kind of get confused as to why you lose games you kind of win games and don't really review why you win games um and there's things that you're doing and your inherent view of your process of playing the game it just does it's just, it doesn't cut it anymore the game has changed too much people people understand the game too well now and you can't afford to have this approach to the game there's too many things that are just general your approach to the game is too general across the board um, in many, many areas. So the first area is that your matchup understanding. And this is something that you could get away with back in the day because people, and the reason you could get away with it is because people didn't understand waves. Like they had a rough idea, but like they weren't specific. 
And nowadays, I'm assuming you're the player, a player that, you know, because you have pretty decent game knowledge from like an intuitive standpoint, your skirmishing and team fighting is probably pretty good. Your champ mastery on your main champs is probably not bad. You can like get away with having like a, you know, a blase mentality towards your matchups, like a very rough, broad stroke mentality. But this is something that's going to catch up to you, man. And this is, this is ve- you know, when, um, and look, I'm going to be dead serious, you know, when, um, you hear those egotistical, like, grandmaster or challenger players, like, oh, like, this guy's D, D4 or D2 or D1, like, they just kind of, they kind of look down on diamond players. It, it, what they, what, what they struggle to articulate is because when they verse them, the laners don't have, they don't understand the specifics. So, say, if I would have versed a player like you, I just run you over because you don't know, you don't know why you're doing what you're doing. You make decisions that aren't backed by logic. So like I can just, I, I, I you, the way you play this lane, it's like level one, boom, all right, I win this lane. And and what, I'm not trying to put you down, I'm trying to give you a little bit of context about where you're at right now, which is great. Yeah, yeah, no. Right, we're trying to, and, and I think it's great. This is a really good thing. So I think matchup understanding specifically optimal wave states, exactly what you should do with the first few waves, especially that, you know, especially levels one to three is a massive one. But it's understanding the, the intricacies of specifically how you're going to, how you should play out the matchups. And this is something that um, you're not really going to be able to figure out until you really main your champions, like you like all in and you you you, um, you hone in on a few champions, which are, this is where champion mastery really comes into play. And this is where in the mid lane academy, 1v1s play, play a big... Uh, can actually help you big time. And this is what low diamond, high plat, you know, is all about. Really understanding, getting into the details about, you know, matchups. So this is one area that I would urge you to, I mean, it's inevitable. You're going to have to focus on it. And if you don't, because it was actually the way you play this lane in another matchup, that could literally be it. You could just lose the game levels one to three. In certain matchups, it's, it's that important that you know what to do levels one to three, that the game is just over. It's end of review. Um, now the second area that I would urge you to, uh, we, we're going to probably have to work on is, uh, identifying your role in the game. So your, this is going to help many areas. This is obviously going to identify, this is going to identify like how you should play fights. This is going to help you influence the way you play fights. This is going to influence your macro decisions. And this is also going to identify how you play your lane to a certain extent, There's a, like the, the end part of your lane. And your and, and the, I would say the big part of this one is your mentality in the game. And when I watched you play this game, you did not have the correct mentality. So you know when we're heading into mid-game, um, and I was saying all these things about like what you probably could have done with the wave in the, in the side lane and like not, not going to that fight um, around the blue and like little things like that. You know how I come to that conclusion? And the reason you don't come to the conclusion? The reason you don't come to the conclusion and be like, wait, oh, I guess like I probably shouldn't shove this wave or I guess that like I should probably shove it instantly group rather than trying to go for the cast in here. The reason I come to that conclusion and can actually make that decision is because I've actually identified my role in the game. I'm not the carry. Kane's not putting resources into me and I've already got a fed Tristana Pantheon. Why, why, you know, so therefore, if I'm not getting any attention and I don't win the 1v1 and my bot lane is winning, I'm just a secondary carry. I'm, I'm a support, I'm a facilitator for my fed bot lane. And to put this into context, you already messed up by going bot and like give, missing like two A's and then trading kills with the Cassidy. As soon as that happened, that was the, that was the, that was the, um, that was it. That was you know, you, that was your, I, you are now a secondary role. You're basically another support, which is fine. I win many a games like that. I played, I play the amount of games that I won with Fizz, playing Peel Fizz support is ridiculous, but it's part of the league experience. You're not going to be the carry of every single game. And this is where people say, oh, you know, I went into the side lane and I don't win the 1v1 and I, you know, I just slowly lose. No, it's because you just don't know how to play the side lane. Which ties it, which kind of ties into the third thing here is that your side laning, your your decisions in the side lane, just didn't make any sense. You were shoving waves that you couldn't actually completely shove out. You had opportunities to freeze when you had TP, 
Um, and you were, sh you were hard shoving when your jungler were like doing something on the other side of the map and your team wasn't looking to pressure or anything. Conversely, then you are overextending in the lane and trying to contest, trying to get the wave out in the 1v1 when you don't win the 1v1. So your side laning in general didn't make sense, even from like a theory standpoint. Um, and I would say the last little thing here, which is another mentality thing, is um, I feel as though you, I mean, this kind of ties into this one as well, but um, when I was watching you play, you felt very flustered. You felt very like confused. It was just like a confused boy running around the map. Like you didn't, you didn't, and I think this ties into identifying your role. You didn't know what you were to do. And when you don't know what you are to do and you don't know how you're to play fights and you don't know how you're going to win the game, then you, you will tend to make more and more, your decision-making will get worse progressively throughout the game. So this explains that, that very flustered, confused mentality that I saw within this game. So, in terms of priorities, what we're going to have to do is I think that this is going to be one of your biggest learning objectives. I mean, first things first, you're going to have to have two or three main champions. At least three main champions that you're going to have to all in on. I don't really give a shit what they are, but you're going to have to all in on three champions because this is what's going to form the crux of your identity. And then with this, you're going to be able to, yeah, you're going to have to start to get into the details about the matchups. Because at some point, you're going to get exposed, whether it's now, whether it's in Diamond 1, or whether it's in Master Tier. At some point, you're just going to get exposed. So you're going to have to understand the optimal wave states. You're going to have to understand the optimal lane pace. You're going to have to understand um, optimal trading patterns and how to go about all of these matchups. The fact that you didn't think about resolve secondary casting and bone plating and what you wanted to do with the wave and where you wanted it so on and so forth. It was just a, it's a bad sign. We need to fix it. So that is your priority. And, and so the way we can do this is we can either do it via the matchup spreadsheet or what you can do is simply after every single game, the exact matchup you played, have your own hypotheses about what you wanted to do. You can compare that with other people in the Midland Academy or you can go onto YouTube, type in that exact matchup, you know, um, Silas versus Cassidy and watch the first seven, eight minutes of like three different matchups three different VODs and then compare that with yours and see what was different, what worked, what didn't work. Or if you're really scared about a matchup, say you're scared about Silas v. Katarina, it seems like you have a bit of a mental block there, go into the Milan Academy and 1v1 someone three or four times in a row. Get Understand the matchup. The reason you're banning Katarina is not because the champ's good. It's because the champ, you just don't understand the details. You haven't got into the details, so you have a mental block. You're creating mental block because you haven't got into the details. Now, the second learning objective is you must use the lol states to identify your role. So, again, based off the the things that happen in the game, your champ's effectiveness in the game, who's fed, what objectives are up, that sort of thing, you must identify your role. This should have influenced the way you play fights. If, and look, to be honest with you, I think when you were sieging mid here, look, the reason in my mind this was not optimal, where was it? The reason this wasn't optimal in my mind is because I didn't want... We, we just got to play this slow. We don't need to force. Tristan is incredibly fed. If all we do, if we get this tower back up, and then we just peel the Tristana in the team fights with the Pantheon, we're all good. But then what happens? We E in, we use our peel ability aggressively for no reason when we can't even dive. And then we go in forward when Kassadin is coming in from the side and, and don't peel the Kassadin. Because my, I would be obsessed about peeling the cast in and away from my Tristana because I know that we can just win the front to back team fight or playing around the cane and, and making picks. So you just fail to identify your your role. You're going in on the back line. <laughs> yes, and it just kills your Tristana and then the fight's over anyway. Even if you were to kill right. two targets. It's because you haven't identified your role. Even when it comes to that, that decision when you were like in side lane or going for that blue fight. No, you don't need to do anything special. You've got to fed Tristana. Stop getting yourself behind. And this is something that I talk a lot about within a, in, in my Midland Academy videos, but this should help largely your mentality within the game and says, do, do I need to be, do I need to lose gracefully? Do, am I the carry in which I'm going to communicate with the jungle what I want from him? Am I the carry in which I'm going to be calling objectives and trying to start fights around me? What, what is it that I need to do? But you did not do this. Yeah. 
Definitely not. <laughs> so, so I'd say this is a good starting point. I think that I urge you to watch. I think you also will get a lot of value from watching a bunch of Midland Academy vods. I mean, it's the same stuff. I think, but I think right now what we got to do is you, you, what you have to do is you have to start watching Midland Academy vods. Ideally, the Silas ones in there. We've got high elo ones. Um, you need to start watching more videos to cr to create more intent. And I need to know what you're capable of. Because right now, you're kind of like a... Uh, you're kind of like this dude that ha probably has a lot of like intuitive knowledge. But we need to now kind of uh, figure out what you do or don't understand in a way. So I think in the process of doing the matchup stuff and, and the identity stuff, you're going to be surprised about what you can come up with creatively, especially with side landing and stuff like that. So um, it's going to be tough, but your learning objective might even be, okay, I want to use every single lull state to identify what I believe to be the win con and my role within this game. And this should influence how I should play fights, what objectives we can or can't contest, where I need to put my vision and hover, so on and so forth. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Any questions? Um, no, but definitely I'll, I'll come back with questions next time for sure. Cool, man. Thank you. This for was going. super helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Brilliant. So this matchup actually... Also, can you hear the fan in the background? Is it causing... No, it's Is it good. loud? Okay. Good. So this matchup is pretty scary for me because I've played it a lot from the Zed's point of view. And I feel like it's completely like unplayable for Cassio if he plays it well. So, seeing what my bot lane and top lane matchups this game was, I from the get go was like, okay, so Ezreal Velkov should win, top lane should win, and like immediately I thought that my role in this game is to just not die to Zed and keep him from killing my Ezreal Velkovs, and that I'll just win the game through that. Okay. And I don't know if that was the right mindset from the get go. But that's it's it's kind of like a a mental block I have versus Zed as Cassiopeia because when I play Zed versus Cass, it's just like I don't know I have a mental block. Yeah, it's from a the hard Cass point of view. It's a very hard matchup, and the reason it's hard is because uh, Cassiopeia has not the middle of trading, right? Well, that but 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 Cassio has one of the lowest base armors in the game, so Zed does a lot of damage to Cassio. And also, Cassio doesn't build boots early, which can actually hurt the fact that it's harder to dodge the Zed combo. But I, I agree. I think that your your role right now is to kind of play for 2v2s. You're not really going to win the 1v1. I think that if Ramus comes in, though, you hold the wave on your side, I think that um, mm. there is a lot of gang threat. Because if you get the CC, if Ramus gets the CC onto um, Zed, you can change this in very easily. Mm -hmm. So I think that you're right. I think that, look, let Ramus do his thing. If Ramus chooses to come mid, I think great. And I think you probably can snowball with that lead. But I think in terms of the isolated 1v1, you're not really... It's going to be It's gonna be tough. Yeah, it's it's a real mess, <laughs> as you're going to see. So I think what we can actually do in the very early lane, I think we can actually start hard shoving, go for level 2 first, and then bounce the wave. We probably can look to do that. Because I think our level 1 or 2 is definitely stronger than the Z. Yeah, definitely. I've had other games where I got killed by Z level 2. So it's like... Uh, right. Like I got trauma over that. <laughs> okay, but we've Which let him... Which really mind this play. Yeah, so I think there was a bit of a missed opportunity there to potentially maybe get a good trade level 2 as well. But because of the... If we shoved, but... um. It is what it is. We allow Zed to shove us in. We try to hold the wave as much as we can. Take a little bit of damage in the process. All right, brilliant. So we got our bot lane doing quite well. We should have got W. Oh, nice. Beautiful. Uh, I feel like if we had W... Yeah, it's okay. We yeah. got the flash though, which is amazing. 
So I think what we should do here is we just shove the wave in and reset, honestly. So that's amazing. Flash on Z is very, very big. Beautiful. Yep, that's okay. Take that damage, doesn't even matter. Amazing. Great job. Go back for an early cloth armor, refillable, beautiful. We come back, miss a little bit of CS, but it's not the end of the world. Okay, so all we gotta do is time this Z flash. So what's what's your what's your mind right now? Where you, where are you at mentally in this game? Um, what's going through your mind? I just don't want Z to roam, and <laughs> I don't want to die, and that's all that's going on through my head. So I'm just thinking I want to keep the wave on my side as much as I can, so he can't yep. kill me, and he can't easily crash it either. Yep, love it. So it looks like the wave is actually shoving out right now. So it looks like we should probably commit to getting this wave under and just bouncing it out. Rather than slow building. Um, but it's either work. Okay, Morgana shows topside. We're in an isolated 1v1 here. He actually misses the counter, which is great. So he does have a Dirk. Nice, you're doing a very good job of avoiding these combos, which is great. And as you predicted in the champ select, our bot lane is doing great. We have an obvious win con through bot. Oh, this is where it goes downhill. Yeah, I remember thinking here, okay, they won it, so I'm leaving, going back mid. Oh, but then right. they keep they have an extended fight. I wasn't sure what to do here. Yeah, they kept extending the fight, and I, yeah, you'll see what happens. Yeah, there's nothing you can do here, man. This is not your responsibility. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, oh! He gets Predator right at that last second. And Flash Barrier. Oh! I thought I had Ignite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I usually play Ignite with Cassia, so I just lost the memory. Okay. First of all, you know that if you get behind this lane, it is going to get messy. Yeah. And this is the look. This is a tough lesson. This is a very, very tough lesson, but it's it's a, an important lesson. And I have made very similar mistakes in my time. Um, I've done this actually with. Uh, I've done this with a lot of Oriana and Twisted Fate lanes myself, where I see something happening. I'm like, oh, I want to help the team. I get behind versus I maybe miss a wave or something versus say a, like a fizz or or something like that, and I just can't survive. And um, <laughs> this is basically worst case scenario. Not only do you miss a bunch of farm, you blow both summoners. So again, you just can't help here. You pan your camera. The play is done. This play is done. If this play was around here. Sure, but you can't afford to go all the way up towards the, to the top part of the river right now. You can't afford to do this. It's just not your responsibility. Yes, you can fend Z away, and this is great like that. That's a very good job. You eat forces W and everything. That's great. But we need to go back mid. The, the play is done. And it feels shit. You feel like an asshole. But it's, it's fine. It's one for one. Volibear, go back top, catch his wave. It's all good. Look, maybe if you had initially burnt Flash here. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking too. Maybe it can work. Maybe. Because then you can still have barrier. Mm-hmm.
end up wasting it anyway, so it's like, why? But unfortunately, yeah, now look, you lose, what, like at least two waves under your tower right now. Volibear also misses a metric ton of farm. Zed now gets a kill. You have no summoners. Um, it's not looking good. You just made the game way harder than it needed to be. You were in an amazing position, dude. You were in an amazing position. It's just, it's just a tough lesson. There's not really much to say about that. It's just a really, really tough lesson. It's in, in compensation. And yes, sacrificing a member is completely fine. Sacrificing your jungler for you to be strong in the game is, is more than fine. I have a question then. Because um, I hesitated like a lot there. Yeah. If I went immediately, like with no hesitation, would it, sh would it have been a better play? Or should I have just literally left it as soon as I saw the fact that they were both low? Because you said the play is over. Yeah, but you don't know what Morgana's doing in this situation. You don't know. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, you did walk here, and then, like... I mean, if you walked over now... Uh... Yeah, I thought they could, too, eat one. Yeah, and... maybe, maybe. Yeah. If you did it with no hesitation, maybe. But... Look, I'm not really concerned about the specifics of the situation. I'm more concerned about... I'm more concerned about the mentality. Um, yeah. Like, it's just one of those very unfortunate situations. Where it's, hard, it's hard to review. It, 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 like, it's hard to, like, know what the key takeaway is as well. It's one of these events that, like, all I know is that as a Cassiopeia into Zed, you must be valuing XP and farm and, and doing what is good for you. Otherwise, you can't survive. That's all I know. So unless it's a very clean kill, if it's not a clean kill... Then, then no, don't go for it. Makes sense. That's my that's my premise anyway. If it's if it's a play, a play is a play. But if it's if it's fifty fifty, I will not take the fifty fifty. All right, we come back. Beautiful. We don't have any sums right now, so this is where we can literally get hundred to zero. We're about probably a level and a half down. All right, we pull the wave. Beautiful. The flash is going to be coming back up right now. They're on dragon. And again, I'm assuming you have a very similar mentality to just don't die. Yeah, well, I mean, especially now. You know, like if Zed runs away with the game, you can easily do that. Vilkaz as a rule. Or super easy for Zed. But now because of that play, I just I can't stop him from roaming. So yeah. half my min half my game plan's gone. Yep, Zed roams bot. One of the things I was trying to work on this game is improving my side lane awareness and panning my camera. Okay. So you'll see that kind of also causes some issues for me. So what's Because I'm not uh, good at ba balancing it yet. What's your thought process in terms of itemization, by the way? Um, I'm going a uh, Rift Maker build now. Right. Which is pretty good. I, I like it more than Lee Andrews in most situations, especially against Zed. So, because, yeah, one thing I was going to say is, like, I, I love that you don't finish uh, Seekers. Because I yeah. feel as though between the one Cloth Armor and Barrier, you're all good anyway. Yeah, Seekers is really, I don't think it's gold efficient. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, unlucky. Look, I think it'd probably be a little bit better to hold your W here, I'll be honest with you. 
I, I mean, what, what, you don't really get much value from using W here. Because think about it. Ramus is going to catch up to Zed no matter what. He's already used his W. What, what, what does using W here actually do apart from like a little slow? Doesn't change anything. But if we held our W and we actually use W here, I think we kill. You're right. Yeah, we definitely do. Alright, so bots trading kills, yeah. which is not optimal. So you can see half my health bar is gone. Yeah, from one trade. I, I, I was not looking at the right. at my land. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I was like, where's my health? I thought I had more. So now I just, I kind of, I guess, accept reality and realize I have to base. Because as soon as he gets W up again, I think I die. And then he runs. Would you say that's the right call yep, for me? Yep, 100%. You just die otherwise. Yep. Look, we can maybe look for a creative roam bot side here, knowing that Zed's top. You've got a pink in bot side. Yep, beautiful. I like it. All right, must have been watered. Yeah. Come back. This game's looking very desperate, but it's okay. We can, if we can maybe stall it out and play the front to back, it could be okay. I could see it being doable, it's, but it's going to be tough. It's going to be a tough game. Like, in terms of your role in this game, the way I'm doing it is you've got a 4 and one Israel. Um, you've got a Ramus, you've got front to back, you've got, the two, you've got two heavy front line, you've got the volleyball, you've got the Ramus. I think in a front to back, you guys are going to be okay. But getting to that point where you can actually play the, the front to back with the Ezru is going to be the, t the tough bit. Oh, I'm assuming there you were scouting out the Zack, right? Yeah, I didn't yeah. want him to gank bot lane from behind. Yeah. Or not Zack, it was the other guy, whoever the jungler is. Right, Morgana. Alright, so Zed looks bot. And me staying here to push out the wave is better than trying to match it, of course, right? Yeah, I don't think you can follow. You can't. Because if he yeah. just sits in that bush, he's just going to turn on you and kill you. So yeah. you're all good. You made the right choice. Beautiful. Zed gets a kill on Ramus, but that doesn't really do much. The play was already over. Okay, beautiful. Dragons up. Volibear is doing very well on the top lane as well. Actually gets top tower. Amazing. We're sitting on a lot of gold right now. Yeah, I realize it's an issue because Dragon and me having a recall is really bad here. Can you oh, hello? Yeah, sorry. I'm, I think I must have... My internet cuts out randomly. I don't know what's going on. Can you hear me? Or you see my screen? Or I can good? hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Did my screen... You see my screen? Yeah, I can see it. I think the quality of the stream just went down a bit. Is, this, is it picked back up again? I think it's... Yeah, I think it's fine now. Okay. It's fine. Just got to turn oh. up the quality... All right, so beautiful. We come back. We ended up resetting here, and I, I saw that you said give, you said give the dragon, um, and I think that's I think that is the correct call in this situation. I don't think there's it's worth you risking a fight with you with six hundred gold. I made that mistake yesterday. But then look for a play. That's okay. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now we actually come back. I think if we group around, we're all good, but they get it. And that's okay. It's okay to give the dragon the situation. We're scaling, like you said, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I saw Volibear top, and I'm like, okay. Yep. This Volibear doesn't want to contest. We just don't do it. Yep. Beautiful. 
Uh, so Zed's getting pushed a lot, ends up going bot. It feels really bad because Zed keeps like chain ganking yeah. bot lane and I feel like I can't do anything to help. Yep, based off what happened in the early game, there's not much you could have done. She'd really grab blue here. Amazing. Swap up the lane assignments. You go bot. I think you guys win 2v2. I genuinely think you guys win 2v2 now. You have Riftmaker. You have both Sums. And Ramus is quite good in the 2v2 scenario. Holy shit. Okay. Not terrible. We trade one for one. <laughs> okay. Another kill. Beautiful. Bot lane is winning. Beautiful. This is great. And I love what you've done, dude, in terms of identifying your role in this game. Like, you knew that you weren't, like, the immediate carry. You knew Ezreal was a carry. You knew your job was to try and minimize and buy time for the Zed and buy time for you, sorry, and, and your Ezreal as much as possible. Look, there wasn't really much choice you had. You, I'm glad you didn't compensate after that initial compensation. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, I'm stoked about. So, well done, dude. Really well done. Thank you. I love seeing people win these games because you can easily see how a Cassiopeia in your situation after that play happens, they just tilt and lose the game. Like They just refuse to give pressure. Yeah. And because you successfully understood that you weren't the win con, you, you, you should win this game. Pretty straightforward. We group up. Yeah, I, I, I've been that Cassiopeia until like Kiana and Zed before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a part of your job as playing a mage is that you've got to understand that you don't sometimes shit happens. You got to understand how to lose gracefully, and you did that very well this game. Okay, we rift mid. We take the inside track. They get the dragon, but we get in here worth worth the trade. Yeah, I felt really nervous about this play though, because I knew they could collapse from behind. We were all like half health. Yeah. Was going for this early inhib actually good from like a macro play point yeah, of view? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Because you, you you couldn't walk in unfortunately to the to the pl to the dragon. Because of, like, Morgana and stuff. So, I think you made the right play 100%. Because I know, like, I've, like, personally won games because the enemy has given an early inhib and let us farm up. So, I was worried about the same thing in this situation. Because I, I didn't know if we want to get this inhib with 20 minutes. No, nah, like, 20, 20 minutes is, I mean, that's fine. Because Baron's up. Mm. Uh, beautiful. I think all we got to do right now is we got to push it out top side. We can just we can literally just start the Baron, make a pick, and then start the Baron. Beautiful. Start the Baron. Easy. 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 And that's an easy win. So look, honestly, I I am very very happy with this one, dude. Uh, really, really well done. I, I love, love, I love seeing this. This is actually kind of the opposite of that last Silas review, isn't it? In a way, yeah. You identified no how to, well, what you had to do, and you you accepted reality that okay, I can't really match Jed's roams. He's gonna shove me in. You didn't compensate and die again for the second time. You suck it up, and then you you did what you had to do. And I saw that you actively tried to pull the wave and hold it on your side as long as possible. You actively time flash. And unfortunately, weren't able to burn it. The burn the um, get a kill within the flash first flash timer. But outside of that initial compensation on the top side, some of the highlights for me were that you actually called off the dragon when you had sixteen hundred gold. Amazing. That was a, a beautiful, beautiful call. You um, you didn't forced down that that dragon when you could have just went through the inside track um you timed zed flashes really well you group for the rift held when you had a choice between going bot and going to the rift held when you didn't have tp amazing as well knowing that you know it's okay to give a bit of farm and play around your team just a series of a very high quality macro decisions and this is a vod of replication 
Schwartz, can you for mute, that man? One someone else is play. someone else is in the call, not muted. I think Schwartz, you know, mute man. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, and like like Saika said, like, there's a lot of people that would lose this game. A lot of people wouldn't be able to win this game. And um, so yeah, this is a vote of replication. And I think if you can continue this sort of mental resilience and identification of your role, you'll be killing it. Thank you. Can I ask a few questions? Sure, man. So well, one is I, I really want to get over my anxiety of this matchup from the cast point of view. So, um, I mean, do I just have, is it just like 1v1s that I got to play this? My idea is, uh, my or sorry, my problem is I don't really know how I'm supposed to play the early levels. Because you said I can start pushing for a crash on the second wave. What, what would I actually do hypothetically here to play an optimal lane versus that as Cassio? How would, it, how, how would it look like? Kevin, Kevin, are you here? Yeah. yeah what's up? So look, my, oh, oh right, the other Kevin, sorry, yeah, not, not Kappa there, Kaiwin. Um, so at the start, I, I said in this vault, I said, you could probably actually abuse Zed's levels one and two and probably get level two first and probably take a good trade. Would you agree with that? Or would you try and allow the wave to shove in from level one? I think that really depends on the Zed player. Like if the Zed just starts pushing level one then i'll let him push into me and then call for ganks but like if the zed just backs off then yes i would like build waves and just like poke under turn yeah so yeah uh, so that's what i kind of felt as though you could probably do both and and like but the... then at level three though you just gotta respect or yeah. dodge his combo and then you can pressure again the way i view this matchup it's like it's a combination of like it's like mechanics max like you kind of just got to avoid the combo it's literally depending on your ability to avoid the combo plus, but I think overall they're holding the wave on your side, prevents him from using his W as aggressively. Exactly what you did was the way to go. And to be honest with you, you actually did a very good job of avoiding the WEQ combo. So I don't really know where your mental block come from. You did a, a very good job. I just think that um, you maybe in the past you've, you haven't understood the optimal wave position or maybe in the past you didn't, your micro wasn't good enough to avoid the combo or you didn't understand how the combo worked or maybe you just compensated and followed rooms and died or a combination of the yeah. three. So I would say this was yeah. one of those matchups where, yeah, it's all about wave management. And I think you did a, you, you had the correct type policies. So doing 1v1s, I guess, can solve that. But the, the, if the problem is, is that in a 1v1, there's no gang threat. So, like, obviously, Zed is going to be able to use WEQ deep in the lane and not get punished. But that's just not the reality in a real game. But, yes, you would still get value from practicing how to dodge the combo, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. No problem at all, man.